Cynthia Orleans Boham, a rep for women in mining Ghana, and also I lecture at University of Mines and Technology, UMAT. So today, as we are here to present on solutions, what we can do in the ASM sector, women in mining, we are here to share with you our success story with Tinga Bole. So we are come to talk about the sustain, what we are also doing with respect to small scale mining. Everybody's talking about small scale mining. They are polluting water. The women are not educated, this and that. I'm a woman. So forgive me if I'm a bit gender biased here. Who are women in mining? Someone may ask. We are actually a nonprofit group we look at changing perceptions that you have about mining. We have mentorship programs. We catch them young, nurture them to this engineering programs, talking about the STEM and all the other groups. Please, next slide. We promote women and help them advance in the mining sector. We also look at the, please slide five, thank you. So the SDGs, the UN SDGs, we are looking at no poverty, gender equality, decent work and economic growth, and how to reduce these inequalities. So Women in Mining is made up of many, a, a cluster of people, okay? We have the academia, we have government people being part of us. We have people who provide services, and most importantly, we have the small-scale mining sector. And we are more of advocates for women. We interact with government bodies. And we try and promote these policies and law that govern our mining. We talk about TSIC Africa. For this project I'm coming to talk about, we partnered with them. And that is the Social Investment Consultancy Africa. This project was funded by World Bank. And we work with them. This was to promote responsible and sustainable ASM among women in the northern region. Slide nine, please. The main objective of our work was to look at the research for policy advocacy and also capacity building. Someone may ask, why the northern region and why women? We had to try from the community level to the national and to the international level and why you need women to be part of it. Last week in the conference, it was projected that a company that has lots of women, they actually report low accident. And we have the ladybird being a very good example for this. Before this project went on, we had stakeholders meeting with Minerals Commission, the Ghana National Association of Small Scale Miners, and all the other stakeholders linked with mining. This is actually ongoing, and we still, you know, when we present the work, we get to know the loopholes, and then we work on it. So now to the Tinga project, slide 13. We all know that ASM contributes greatly in Ghana's economy. If you look at the large-scale mine, I always say that if there is gold in Ghana, if you can see gold, if you can get gold to even make your wedding rings, your jewelry, it's from ASM. Because from what I know, the large scale mines are always taking the gold away. I stand to be corrected. So this is also a map, okay, so I'm going a bit fast, forgive me. Slide 13, okay, so this is just a map showing the single sites that we went when we put the coordinate together, we were able to draw this map. And this was drawn by Rosemary Okla of Geological and Survey Department, the National Geological and Survey Department. From our work, we faced some challenges. We realized that we, these women had difficulty in assessing finance. Their technical knowledge was on the low. Access to markets was on the low. And their working conditions in terms of child care was one that wasn't good at all. Slide 17, please. Okay. 
So in the pictures here, the first was when we went to the site, we went to Tinga, and you could see kids on the site. Some were even, they were just there, they were not even going to school. And then you could see piles of the all just packed, unlike the large scale that they have a rum pad. If I say rum pad, I mean the run of mine where they keep the mine sample there. But over here, it was just there like that, which was not good. When we went to their processing, it was realized. So the first picture is a miner who is going underground. I mean, if you see this, you wonder how they get there, the security, the safety aspect is low. And even to the underground mine, how they haul their materials, it's very dangerous. And an all buyer is just sitting down, being unconcerned. So we got these pictures from the inception notes when we went for the meeting. And out of that, I'll talk briefly about the value chain in ASM. We start from prospecting to exploration, down to refining. This is the mining value chain. We have the first, second, and the third phase. And most small scale miners fall in the first to second phase. And you'd be surprised that it's the third phase that actually contains more gold. You and I know that if I give you a bar of chocolate and a cocoa fruit, most of us will go with a bar of chocolate. So that's what happens here. And that's why the third phase contains most of the money. In terms of how they do the processing, when we realized these challenges, we had to train them. As I said earlier, I'm a lecturer. I lecture small scale mining in UMAT, and I'm also a WIM volunteer, so I was more of the technical trainer there. So I taught them about, this is what they are used to, okay? When they go to the mine site, this is an underground mine site which was taken in Takwa, okay, and how they're processing, reducing it, using the chamfa, sluice board and everything, the amalgamation, you could see the finger there. So this is what they are used to. So what new thing were we bringing on board? We had to, please the next slide. We had to conduct training sessions. We had to even let them know more about the COVID-19 protocol, the body mapping. Some came and they were complaining about their waste. So you realize that we draw, the, we draw a skeleton there. We asked them to come and map which side of it you are having the effect from. So that was the body mapping section. We taught them about health and safety, then how to improve gold recovery. With that, I started with the sluice board, the mat that is used, even the angle of the sluice, because if the angle is too steep, you end up letting your gold run off. And if it's too flat, you end up loading it with all your gold. So we, it should be at a certain angle, and that is what we taught them. And this, as I said, we mentor people. So we had people from CK Tadam University, that's UDS, it used to be UDS. So we got these students assisting us with our work. And we went to the North Pass. that's why we went with them. So please, before <laughs> I'm worried about why UDS. So these are some of the trainings, still on the training. We taught them about the basic geology of the area. We made them know about financial management and also the water quality and then business management. Let's talk about the alternative livelihood. Because when there was a ban, a lot of people became handicapped. They didn't know what to do. So now we are trying to push this alternative livelihood, how to make liquid soap, how to bake something. You know, you have to do something. You just don't have to stay there. So these were some of the trainings that we taught them, even about first aid. We hear of a mine pit always breaking in. What happens? What do you do? So these are some of the trainings that women in mining, we did. And at the end of it, I will say that in terms of the policy, we realize that most stakeholders, when they are talking about the framework in ASM, they leave these women out. So we were trying to bring them on board, at least the decision-taking level. In national small-scale mining, we have Madame Adobia, Madame Janet Kusi, who is helping out. And we want to push more for these so that they'll be better and you know, develop the sector properly. In terms of economics, there is always a saying that women don't have money because our money is our money. Our husband's money is still our money. 
So when we talk about economic issues, people tend to be like, women, dear, but please, this one, we need help. The ASM sector, we need help. For the environmental aspect, it was realized that both the regional level, the number of site visits that we went, this EPA and the, the water company, they are mostly in the regional levels. So when we even asked the miners about the avistation, they said it's limited. The good thing is, in the Bole area, there's no water pollution going on. Well, from our um, research group, and that is one good thing. But still, they need these stakeholders to be coming around to help them. They didn't have even a knowledge about the impacts of the mining practices and what they were doing. And we also talked about the COVID-19 health issues. And then we got to know that most of the issues that they had was mining related. The respiratory issues, the poor nutrition, you know. Some of them, they just ignore it. The mercury usage. Okay, most of the mills are becoming water pistols, and you'd be wondering why. You have a husband, you're unable to give birth. He's just a water pistol, and it's as a result of the mercury usage. He's been polluted with it. Okay, I'll go on. In conclusion, okay, so these are some of the social issues that we had. And as women in mind, we want you to change your perception about mining and the women. We can also do it. In fact, we are doing it. So I don't feel very comfortable when I hear that women are not giving the platform. In UMAT, if I could just say something small about UMAT, in UMAT, they focus more on the women. The mentorship, when you have a mentor who is a male, in fact, the, way, the rate at which you grow is always double. My professor here is one of my mentors. Professor Hassan is also one. I can go to their office anytime. Nothing stops you. So you don't have to you know, tell yourself that you were a woman, so you can't do it. Just start moving, and you realize that the road is actually smooth. Conclusion is that in addressing ASM issues, they should please involve the women in the sector. Now we have Madam Adobia, Madam Kusi, Dr. Amina Tahiru. We have these women, and we want to see more women on board. As they are national small scale miners here, if you're interested, you can just see them, you register. I'm also here, women in mining. If you're interested in joining us, too, you can join us to push this policy together. And from our research, we realized that both the male and the female lack technical training. So my training was, or the training we had was not just for the women. It was open for both the male and the female to participate in it. And with the technical support, I believe that the small scale mining will be a, at a better place. You will see them, instead of just washing the tailings into the land, they will be developing the three-point system that is helping, in which they will just be reusing the water and not polluting the environment. And also, on the health and the environmental aspects, there was lack of knowledge with respect to the potential risks of women and then their families. Whenever you talk about women, someone will tell you that women is linked with the family. You can be a woman, you can have a family, you can still do all these things together. So that is one of the things I have to share with you, our success story and what we did in Tinga. We've just started another project with Nswayim ladies, a group I'm just developing, and we also wish to train them. So at least in providing solutions, women in mining, we have one success story, and we hope for more to come. So on that note, thank you very much for the platform given me. Thank you.